today with physicist and writer of the Climate Water Project. Welcome, Alpha. Well, when the rain comes down, it can flow all the way back into the ocean. But if you slow that water, say if you have more forest or soil that's more absorbent, it stays in the land for longer. And then when it evapotranspires, it can evapotranspire. There's more water left on the land to actually evapotranspire. If you can imagine, um, it's like there's a certain amount of water on our continents, but if it's all rushing out during the, during the winter, during the wet season, then there's less water there to evapotranspire. And that evapotranspired water combines with the moisture blowing inland from the ocean to create rain. So you're going to affect the amount of rain um, on the land. So if it just flows over the land as runoff, then it flows out all during the wet season and you don't have much left for the dry season. But if you can actually slow the water um, so that it kind of sinks in and goes underground, then it can come out two, three, four, five months later during the dry season. So your rivers can keep running. So it's, it, it's, an, it's a way to keep your landscape hydrated more during the um, dry season. And also if your aquifers are high enough so that the tree roots can reach it, the tree roots, it's called hydraulic redistribution, can bring up that water during the dry season. And then the mycelia can actually pass it to other trees who maybe don't have deep enough roots to get to the, to the groundwater table. But it's, it's now kind of becoming a bit more seeping into the mainstream climate science. That, oh yeah, forests do create rain. Um, and there's, a, there's actually a number of aspects that uh, also may be influencing this. So um, David Sands, he discovered, um, I think in the 70s or 80s, um, that bacteria were starting to, um, that they could float up in the air and actually seed rain. And then the people discovered that fungi spores could too. Water vapor, when it's in the air, it needs to be above um, saturation humidity, but it also needs something to nucleate it to form rain. And so, and, and this is still a bit of a nascent field, but it, it seems like there's also, uh, you know, little microorganisms that can seed the rain. And so in the forest, you have more of these. So that's one aspect, but people weren't, Connecting, and this is happening in Greece, in California, and we had, you know, we had droughts and we had uh, fires and then uh, British Columbia, they had uh, droughts and then they had fires and then they had floods and then Brazil is having those three. And so this is a, a pattern all around the world. And for some reason, uh, I, I, the only person I know who's promoting it is Zach Weiss and he's calling it the watershed death spiral. Let me just explain the connection between the three. So the drought, um, well, obviously dries up everything. So that, so that it creates fires is not, is, is pretty obvious, but the floods to fire, a fire to floods is not quite so obvious, but what, if you, if your fires get too intense, like traditionally in nature, you do have fires and they're smaller scale, but if it gets too intense, what happens is that this waxy coating happens on the soil. And so that means that, um, the soil is no longer to absorb the rain as much. Um, so that's one problem is that then two years later, after your fire, um, the, when the rains come, they're just going to flow downhill and they'll cause huge floods below. Um, and then the other thing is that the fires can, you know, destroy some of the vegetation that's holding in the soil. And so what happens in floods is that there's so much water and maybe it's stopped further uphill, but then it accumulates and it just creates these landslides that triggers more bigger landslides. And so you, you need to kind of like... Um, after, after a fire, it's really key to, to go in and kind of remediate the soil, mulch it or whatever. And then it's also key to um, replant.